When Oporiel has turned and seasons passed, and the four have wandered their destined path, the fifth shall rise, a soul entwined, with blood of old and spirits aligned. In verdant groves where shadows play, a great change shall come as night turns day. The wild shall whisper, the mountains quake, as the world awakens in Sernara's wake. From root to sky, the cycle ends. In the hands of the fifth, all shall mend or rend. Long has this prophecy been passed down from generation to generation of the Ravka tribe, a tribe of turtles who serve Sernara, a prime deity of nature. Long had they traveled and suffered since the collapse of the old world until they found their way to Oakheart. Two centuries later, the fifth wanderer was born. Orin grew up working the farm. His family of five was all that remained of the once mighty Ravka tribe. Oakheart treated them as outcasts and rarely did they ever go into town. Keeping to the farm, they hid their faith in Sernara as faith in another god was a killable offense in Oakheart. Raised on myth and legend, told by his father of the once great and powerful tribe, Orin grew up to be a dreamer, one who dreamed of exploring the world, no matter how dangerous it is his birthright. His father, Troon, instilled a deep sense of duty in Orin, one that he carries as a badge of honor. Orin wishes to make his ancestors proud, but there are a few problems. The Maul of the Wanderer is missing the souls of his ancestors, a crucial part of the cycle. But even worse than that, Sonara has gone missing, unheard from in generations. Fueled by the need to find his ancestors and revive his tribe and faith, he sought to tear down the order of this town, leading him to a party of like-minded individuals who had felt fed up with the status quo. While venturing with his group and cooking their every meal, he shared his faith of Sonara. Slowly, he began having visions of her essence, as if trapped or silenced. She was weak, desperate even, but alive, and Orin knew what he had to do. When the rebellion concluded, the town was freed of the shackles that once held it back. Orin and his family shared their faith with a town in need. It flourished and blossomed, and with it, Sernara began to heal. Though a fraction of her former self, hope had begun to bud anew. When Dartha enters a room, people sit up a little straighter and show her attention. She exudes an aura of respect and power, her body a well-tuned weapon unafraid to punch wrongdoers. From a very young age, Dartha was always one who yearned for freedom and bucked against the chains of authority. Her family instilled these beliefs in her, for the Melrick family was at the heart of every rebellion. Being a wood elf in Oakheart has its benefits as elves sit atop this corrupt society, but it doesn't spare them from the cruelty. Magic being forbidden from the city, Dartha's mother, Seraphine, a druid, was eventually found out. Turned in by her own son, Calgan, he betrayed the family and was granted higher ranking within the academy for his dutiful service. While the family had to watch Seraphine burn on the pyre, it was then that Dartha knew she needed to tear it all down. Her father Argus and her started plotting and forming a rebel force in the basement of a tavern. Enraged by the betrayal, this fueled Dartha to hone her monk skills further, day and night, meditate and train for years. One day, during the meditation, she tapped into something, some well of power she hardly understands. Two arms of energy exuded from her back. She knows not the details from which she draws her power, but sees it as a means to her enemy's end. One night, while working her cover as a barmaid, she kept watch as rebellion leaders gathered below. She overheard a table of misfits speaking of rebellion. She pulled up a chair and had an idea of having a small team while her father runs the larger operation. The group was quickly on board and they began working away at dismantling the ruling class. But as time went on and the mysteries were unraveled, she realized her brother had never betrayed her. They were lied to and pulled apart. They wanted Calgan for something. By the time she had realized Calgan had never betrayed her family, it was too late. He was taken aboard the enemy's vessel and presumed dead until a vision was forced upon her, revealing Calgan's new form, clawing at her sanity. Desperate for answers, she sought out the necromancer Noro, Calgan's former lover. 
his mind warped from the dark ancient tome that ensnared his soul in his desperate attempts to resurrect his deceased lover. After a harrowing encounter, Nora witnessed Calgan's essence embedded in a place whispered as the shroud, and in Noro's dying words, he told Dartha to find him, to bring him back. She vowed then to save him and to bring him home at last, uniting the little family she has left. She seeks to understand her power and use it to save those around her and seek revenge on all those who have wronged her. Edme is a quiet individual through most of her day to day, but if you get on her bad side, well your existence is about to get a lot harder. She loves to stir the pot and cause trouble when she can, but you wouldn't expect it from her usually quiet and reserved personality. This pale warlock elf knows little of her past as most of her memories have escaped her. The first thing she remembers is waking up next to a humming obelisk of twisted dark magic. The obelisk called for her. However, she resisted and fled into the forest, unaware of her whereabouts. She ran into the dark forest, but it was large and filled with webs, one of which she found herself caught in. It wasn't long before a large spider collected her and brought her home to Blightwood, a town of the old world, now inhabited by giant spiders. She was brought into town's underbelly of webbed tunnels where Edme found herself confronted by a massive monstrosity of a creature. This creature revealed itself to be a relative of Edme's. She claimed her name was Seda and she was Edme's aunt. Edme was freed and given shelter here in Blightwood where she began to develop powers and relearn herself. While animated and lifelike, Edme finds herself in a state of undeath. But in Blightwood, everything is undead so she wasn't very different. It was hard to tell how much time passed under the massive webbed canopy that covers the sky over Blightwood. It was always night. To Edme, it felt like a few years had passed, but it was hard to know how many. One day, while exploring the forest for herbs, Edme heard a commotion of people whining. Curious, she investigated and stumbled upon the party. They were lost and confused. It was their first time leaving home, and they were in search of Blightwood. Excited for anything new, Edme took them home to Blightwood to meet Seda, where a deal was struck between her and them. Wishing to see the world, Edme asked Seda if she could leave with them, and Seda granted her request. They left back to the town of Okar with Edme now a member. It wasn't long, however, before the mystery of her being and her strange power began to unravel before her eyes. When his wood elf mother died birthing him, his father vanished shortly after, leaving Sigurd to the Oakheart Orphanage. There, he grew to the age of eight and was placed in a warm home with two loving parents and two sisters. Sigurd was very studious, even from a young age. He was smarter than most people around him. He excelled in school, and when he came of age, he was accepted into the Academy of Extended Learning, a high honor in Oakheart, as not many are accepted there. Sigurd learned much and read many books, but he had an insatiable curiosity about the old world and the world beyond. He began asking questions to some of the far older scholars as to why the world ended and how is it we know we are the last remnants of civilization. To his disdain, the answers were varying and rather unlogical. While searching for the truth, he made a friend, a fellow member of the academy, Kalgan. They discussed much and talked often about the weirdness of the place. One day, walking to the tavern after school, an old bully cornered him. He reeked of alcohol while jealousy oozed out of him. He grew violent and punched Sigurd to the ground, knocking him into an alley. Sigurd, in a fight or flight, felt a rush of energy as he counterattacked. His hand filled with lightning and he shocked the bully into unconsciousness. Sigurd ran away, but was in awe of the power. After years of honing these skills in secrecy and learning at the academy, it seemed the authorities had caught on to Sigurd snooping, and he was kicked out of the academy for foggy reasons at best. Needing to pass the time, Sigurd picked up a job at the farm, working with the turtles, where he became close friends with a turtle named Orin, a friendship that would prove to be crucial to the world. Sigurd, feeling burned by the academy and suspicious of the circumstances of the town, with the power to beckon the storm at his fingertips, Sigurd now seeks new knowledge and power to change the world around him. 